So hi everyone, uh, it's Tim here and today I'm going to be live streaming the preparations for the next part of the uh, building products with JavaScript course that I'm doing on YouTube. Uh, and uh, today I want to do the dockerization of our uh, backend as well as uh, continuous integration which will run all the tests and uh, validate all the um, basically code we push to make sure it doesn't break as well as the continuous delivery which will compile our docker image and uh, push it to the uh, docker registry. So for that purpose I'm going to use uh, GitLab uh, because it's basically all in one solution right now and uh, in my opinion it's actually way better than GitHub at the moment. Uh, they do have a few shortcomings but in general I prefer to uh, publish my private projects that I don't need to publish uh, on GitHub uh, for exposure because you know github is sort of a social thing and everyone uses it uh, but gitlab uh, they recently actually released um, version 8.11 which added issue boards which is basically kanban uh, or you know trello mixed with um, issues which is i think just amazing because we use trello uh, pretty much daily with our teams and uh, love it and this allows us to uh, trim one more tool out from the pipeline so it's like really cool in addition to that, they like some um, like merge conflict resolution right in browser. So in GitHub, I, I believe you have to actually do it manually right now. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass. And this basically allows you to do it with just clicking on things, which is pretty cool. Um, what else? Pipeline graphs. This is what we're interested in. So they now have a very fancy visualization of the uh, GitLab CI. And uh, yes, they do have basically GitLab CI integrated, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm still gonna have all the source code on GitHub and that's where I'm gonna push it, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a new project on GitLab and uh, I'm gonna import it from the GitHub. They do have a very nice import interfaces for uh, just about any uh, hosting services you can see here, including the Git repo by URI if you have a private one. Okay, I don't need all of those projects. Let's uh, find my building products with JavaScript and let's hit import. So this is going to import the, uh, basically fork it into the GitLab uh, repo and then I'm going to set up the mirroring so that um, we can, no that's GitHub link, I want the GitLab link, there we go. I'm going to make it public as well and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the uh, pipeline for GitLab CI, I'm going to make it uh, public, I already said that I think. Uh, it's really hard to think when it's so hot outside, it's like 30 degrees today and it's <laughs> can barely think. All right, um, let me edit the project. And um, yes, it's going to be public. Uh, users can request access. Um, I don't think we actually need that. Uh, but yeah, whatever. Let's leave it like this. Uh, so what do we want? We want uh, container registry. So this is one thing. Like uh, Docker allows you to pull containers from registries. And the default one is obviously hub.docker.com. This is where you generally go to look for um, base images and uh, yeah and I hate it because it never searches unless it loads the page completely when it does like for quite some time I'm not sure what's happening there but once it loads it actually allows you to search and you know this is where you go when you look for the base images and uh, whatever images you might want to run and they do provide the auto build functionality here if you have a repo with one docker file but the problem is if you have a huge mono repo which we will have here so at the moment it's just server but we'll have more then uh, I believe it's a bit uh, fiddly to configure the Docker Hub. On the other hand, GitLab allows you to actually uh, push it to their registry, which is pretty nice. And um, in addition to registry, um, they have uh, <clears throat> GitLab CI, which is free on GitLab.com, which is awesome. I mean, it can be, uh, it can take quite some, quite some time, you know, the same as like Travis CI or whatever that have shared runners basically with uh, limits. And if a lot of people are using them, then uh, it's a bit of a waiting time, but I think that's fine. So what I, I think is housekeeping. So what I want to do is I want to uh, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Um, where was it? Ah, mirror repository. There we go. That's what we want. Um, so we want to mirror this repository. And um, yeah, so it will basically automatically update this project uh, from upstream every hour, which means uh, whenever we push to um, github every hour it will take uh, whatever changes are there and pull them and actually um, 
do oh, execute the CI, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it's really what we're interested in. So I'm going to trigger builds for my, uh, yeah, so we want to trigger builds. That's exactly what we want. So I'm going to do that. Um, basically, this is going to be our sort of uh, building um, thing. Um, so it's purely builder. I guess maybe later on we can migrate uh, to a different way so that we push to GitLab and then uh, GitLab will actually push to uh, GitHub for us because this way, you know, we we'll always have the latest uh, code in GitLab and we can uh, get all the benefits of continuous integration and deployment and without any uh, fiddling with uh, GitHub stuff. But yeah, for now that should work. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to our um, project folder and I'm going to create a docker file. So this is the first thing uh, we need is a docker file. I'm going to cd in the server here. So docker file is a file that basically describes how docker should uh, compile your app, right? It's, uh, it might sound scary at first or, you know, strange or interesting or unknown for you, I guess, if you're not familiar with docker. But in reality, it's actually really, really simple. The syntax is uh, trivial as well. So since we're doing Node.js app, uh, because you know we have the package JSON and it actually runs on Node, uh, what we want to do is I uh, want to say that we want a base Node. So this is what I showed in a hubdocker.com and um, I think it was underscore Node if I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. So we have this Node image, which is official repository uh, maintained by the uh, guys from Node. And you know, you have uh, version tags, which you can use, but I think we're just gonna use latest, which is uh, 6.4, which works absolutely fine for us. So first thing you say from Node, that's all you need. Um, actually, there is on so-called on-build files, which um, do everything for you. And it's a really generally a good idea to um, have a look at them when you are doing something because they have a variety of tweaks and improvements. So I'm going to copy this stuff here and remove and build just for the sake of learning. So the idea is really easy. Uh, you tell Docker which commands to execute. Yeah. And then Docker does it uh, line by line. And each line is an additional layer, which will be cached. And you can leverage that. For example, if your NPM dependencies don't change, you can actually pre-install them in this way so that you, when you update your app code, you don't have to wait while npm install runs again, it will be just used from cache, uh, which is cool. So um, again, uh, normally you can just say node on, on builds, uh, I think it was one word, uh, was it? Yeah, it was one word. And uh, just remove all of that basically, because it will work as is for you. But I'm gonna copy all of that just to show um, uh, during the lesson how exactly it works. So what are we doing here? Well, first we are creating the folder for our app, which is going to be user source slash app, which, you know, it doesn't actually matter much where you put it. Uh, we might as well just say slash app. Uh, then we say that this is going to be our working directory. And what we do next is we copy our package JSON in that folder and execute npm install. Again, this is uh, done basically purely for caching. So cache npm uh, dependencies. What that means is as long as package JSON doesn't change, so as long as this step remains the same, this step will also remain the same. So the Docker won't actually execute them twice. And you know, once you copy the um, application files, uh, it will only do this step basically. And that's it. This is really great because it speeds up the development a lot. Once you know, you tweak your uh, build pipelines and you are like changing your um, code maybe a bit, you found the bug, you deploy it. You don't have to wait through the whole NPM install. You just do Docker build and uh, that's it. It takes like milliseconds basically. Okay. So let's uh, annotate this, create app folder. And once we have this, um, this the command thing is basically the entry point. Uh, so this is what's going to be called once you say Docker run your image name. Um, can you have one? Uh, okay, I'm looking at the chat right now. Can you have one for production? I mean, rather have npm install minus minus production. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, the idea of um, having it this way right now is because we're gonna package that and uh, run tests. I'm thinking that for now we're gonna do just npm install because I wanna run tests inside of the Docker container to make sure that everything works fine. 
But uh, it's a good point. It's, it's way better to uh, do npm install minus minus production. Uh, maybe later on we just configure several uh, build pipelines, the one which will actually uh, test and have this sort of uh, debug development uh, based Docker file and the other one which will have just production files, which will be actually quite much faster. Uh, but there's, I think there's like quite a bunch of steps we have to do before that because, you know, right now, for example, we have this uh, Babel core register hook which is um, not something you actually should do in production. So we will pre-compile all the sources and actually run um, the compiled version already. But for now that works. So it's just basic introduction to Docker, let's say that. Um, all right, so we have a Docker file now uh, and we're gonna test it locally. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say docker build minus T, uh, which says tag for image. Uh, let's go, let's call it building products with JS uh, server. And then I'm just going to say, okay, uh, build this folder. And one additional thing, I want to add a Docker ignore file. And I want to say that I don't need node modules folder. Um, and I don't need DB folder because that's where our database files are lying. Um, I think everything else should be in there. Yeah. So basically we ignore uh, things that we don't need to send to Docker because those folders are really large and you know, I don't want to transfer them between the um, host and the uh, Docker uh, server all the time. All right, so once we execute that, as you can see, uh, since I already actually have, uh, come on, Node.js uh, image pulled, it doesn't pull it, but if you want to have it, it will actually first pull the base image, then execute it. And as you can see, he, um, the Docker uh, outputs the hashes and those are exactly the hashes uh, that resulted uh, after the execution of this command. So basically, once we re-execute it, if nothing is changed during this command execution, we'll just reuse this hash. So and we can see that npm install is now running. I will take some time, I guess. Um, shouldn't be too long. I mean, we don't have that much dependencies. The Babel is probably the largest one. I mean, ESLint maybe as well but everything else is more or less quick. Uh, let's see. So let's wait a bit until it installs. Um, I'm thinking about the production install. I mean, if you know any good ways of having NPM install production and then being able to still test it against the, uh, using the dev dependencies, basically, please let me know because I'm like, uh, we usually had, uh, development build that was tested. And then after that, we built def different container, which was production container. So, uh, which is a bit uh, fiddly, I guess. Uh, maybe there is a better way. If there is, then please do let me know. I would love to apply it. I mean, you know, no, nobody likes to do uh, things twice. All right, so now we have it uh, built. And uh, so we have our output here and I think basically I can show you. So if I uh, execute build again, you'll actually see that everything hit cache and it says that using cache and you know, it only built it once. So even if I change anything now during the copy, it will only execute it from step six and reuse cache for NPM install and all other uh, commands, which is pretty nifty. And you know, the fact that again, when you fix bugs and stuff like this, you don't need to wait for the whole NPM install again. So you can effectively reuse uh, everything you did. Okay, I am gonna uh, commit that now. Um, so I'm gonna say add docker, um, docker file for um, basic, uh, for, let's, let's call it for development docker build. Let's call it this way. And uh, yeah, now you want my passphrase, of course. Let me just quickly uh, get my passphrase. No, please, no, don't show all my passwords to everyone. That's not what I want. So where's my key base password? And uh, I want to save it in keychain just to have it there. There we go. So uh, we can push that upstream. All right, so now we have our Docker file, which can actually be used to compile uh, the unified image, uh, Docker image anywhere. Uh, but what we want is to have the um, GitLab CI YAML file, uh, which will actually execute this whole thing, right? So we want to um, GitLab CI pipeline to pull the repository. 
We wanted to uh, build the Docker image. Then we wanted to execute tests inside of this Docker image. And if everything is fine, we want to push this image to the registry. So um, GitLab CI is actually the probably one of the most um, enjoyable uh, CI services I work with. I mean, Travis is not bad as well, but uh, GitLab CI is way more flexible, if we would put it this way. So what do we have here? Um, um, we need a Docker base uh, because this is what we're going to be using. Yeah, I think they had a different. So this is the GitLab documentation. And uh, da, 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 they don't have it here. Let's duplicate this page and then go back. Um, GitLab CI YAML, we need a Docker uh, using Docker images. There we go. So this is a, actually a quite fresh addition to the GitLab because before they only had these runners which allowed to use like base images like the uh, Travis does. So you can use like Node, Ruby, Java, whatever, and then say, okay, I want those services with me. Uh, but right now they actually allow you to run it um, as a Docker, uh, with a Docker base, which means you can actually access uh, Docker service to build and test and push images. Okay. So there we go. Before script, build script. Uh, there was an example. Ah, there we go. That's what we want. So I'm going to copy that. So we're going to use image Docker latest uh, services Docker dins. This is basically the bindings for the Docker daemon. Uh, before script, I don't really think we need anything before here. So I'm just going to command this for now. So build, uh, this is going to be stage, but we're going to call it build server because this is going to be the uh, server build thing, right? So that is basically going to be docker build minus T uh, building products with JS server. That's how I'm going to call. No, okay, that's actually won't work. So we are um, the registry here. Um, is this is going to be the name of the image. So I guess GitLab registry is also not very, um, not very good, not very well uh, suited for mono repositories with multiple images. All right, that's not very, let me ponder. Um, should we create multiple, should we split it to multiple um, contain or nah? I mean, okay, obviously we can just push it to Docker Hub, right? So this is because this is one thing uh, that we can do. We can actually just create, uh, yeah, 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 come on. So we can actually create a public Docker Hub uh, entries because uh, basically currently this is an open source project and you know, we don't really care about uh, privacy here. Uh, so we can create a repository which will be, um, say, building products with JS uh, server. So, and we are gonna say that this is uh, building products with JS uh, demo server image. Uh, then we can add public description later on. All right, so we have. Uh, this tag now, which is what we're going to use. So I, I think, wait, there was a way to specify the, um, let me think, ah, there we go, variables, that's what we want. So, so yeah, this image is, uh, this, sorry, this script is way more extended. So we're going to copy that one. Uh, we need build test phase and release phase. So we're going to skip deploy for now. I will touch it, I think, later on uh, during the uh, further lessons, basically. Okay, and they actually, they also do this uh, in two steps. So they only build it like test image and then release image separately. So uh, I know they just tag it. Okay, then I actually build it. Uh, all right, I mean, whatever. Let's Let's do it for now. So... Let's see what we created. We created this uh, YAMLite slash uh, building products with, with S, what? Okay, I screwed up here. Can I rename it? No, I can't. Of course I can't. Um, please type your name, BPVS server. Okay, yeah, let's make it. Um, okay, why did you, there we go. 
Let's try that again. Uh, no, create a repository. Building products with JS. Uh, yeah, let's do it this way. And then um, it is gonna be, where's my building products with JavaScript? Uh, example server image. We're gonna fill the full description later on. So yeah, that looks much better. So I'm gonna copy that part and uh, we are gonna reuse this, come on. So we're gonna reuse the same name. Basically we'll use the CI build ref name, which is I think auto generated variable by GitLab CI. Um, login, we don't need to, I, don't, I think we actually do need to log in uh, into the uh, registry, which is, uh, because I, I don't think I can push into this uh, image. Yeah, so I cannot push into this image unless I'm logged in. So I'm gonna set up this, uh, let's call it CI uh, Docker Hub uh, password. I'm gonna set this up later on in the GitLab uh, UI config. Um, all right, Docker builds pull. Yeah, so we're gonna execute, but it should be server, right? Because we're building the server here. Uh, and again, yeah, we're gonna do build server here, test uh, server. So we don't need this test to here. Release again, server uh, pull container image. And I guess it's a good idea to actually rename this. Uh, instead of container, we're gonna say server here. And uh, instead of container here, we're gonna say server as well. Uh, caps please, yeah, there we go. All right, so before script, so we log in into um, our um, Git uh, Docker Hub account. Then we build it, so we build by with pulling all the dependencies, we build our server and uh, we don't actually need to push it here, right? Because we want, do we? Yeah, I guess, okay, right, because this is not gonna be a release image, this is gonna be the um, build ref name image, okay, cool. So we push the pre-release image, then we uh, pull it again, we run tests, uh, which will be npm test, uh, am I correct? Yes, I am correct. Okay, so we're on npm test, and if tests are not failing, then we pull it again, we tag it as a release image. Uh, so I guess it's gonna be better to if we just say latest here, uh, no. And then we push it as a release image. And we're gonna do it only for the master branch, uh, and I'm gonna kill this deploy thing here. So theoretically that should um, actually work. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is that git add gitlab c no uh, what are you doing how to complete gitlab ci um add gitlab ci config and now i'm gonna push it and we're gonna force sync the um yeah there is one thing that i need just i need to set up my ci docker hub password uh, to do that, I will go to the variables over here. So basically GitLab allows you to set up secret variables that are not uh, known to um, runners and you know, so that you can safely execute whatever you want. So I'm gonna drag this window to another window because um, to another uh, monitors because I don't wanna see you my um, password obviously. Uh, last, where's my last pass here? Let me move it uh, as well. So there we go, and um, I need Docker Hub, so copy that password and paste it here, add new variable. All right, so I have added the variable, basically it will be used during the uh, build, uh, which is exactly what we want. Right, uh, and now we should have the GitLab CI YAML here, yep. So now we go to um, gitlab.com building products with JS, there we go. And uh, I wonder if there's a way to force sync the mirrored uh, repository. Update now, there we go, cool. So theoretically, it will sync it now, we'll detect the GitLab CI uh, file. 
Yeah, repository is being updated. I see it. Come on. There we go. So we detected the uh, CI file now in pipelines. It should be running. Yeah, there we go. So it's as you can see, uh, the GitLab has a very nice uh, pipeline display now. So as you can see, we can see all phases. And right now we only have one uh, target per phase. But you know, once we have more, we can actually see all of them. So we can actually click on build and see what exactly is happening here. Uh, so as you can see, you know, it used the CI uh, password that I provided and login succeeded. And now it actually is pulling the Node.js image uh, from the um, uh, Docker Hub. So once it's done pulling it, it will actually build the uh, our package. The one downside, obviously, is that since I'm using right now the shared runner, uh, I think they use the digital ocean uh, boxes that are auto set up. Uh, once the things need to be executed. So basically there is no way to uh, utilize caching efficiently. So every time you actually build, it will repull uh, image, it will rerun npm install. So it's sort of, on one hand it's good because you know you want to test it against the newest like execution of the same commands from the clean state. On the other hand, it means it will take quite much longer than it could have been with uh, proper cache. But, you know, that's a minor downside to pay for automated testing. Okay, so let's see how long. I think it should take about like four or three minutes, maybe, uh, maybe a bit less. So we did that. Uh, let me have a quick look. Meanwhile, what I wanted to set up aside from that, um, I think it's basically might be a good idea to precompile our source code uh, to basically remove the uh, usage of... Um, um, table register hook, which is, you know, not exactly a good thing to do in production. And then if that works, we will basically change it to two images. So we're gonna build one, which will be tested. And then we're going to build another one, which will be minus minus production, which will only have production dependencies and should be like way smaller and faster. So because uh, we do want to do that properly, right? Okay, I think and I think that's going to be it for the stream. So it's not going to be exactly a long one. I think <laughs> most of the stream is going to be waiting. Um, okay, we have some Facebook popping up here. No, I don't want your Facebook go away. All right. Um, what else? Do we have anything else to talk about? Mm, not really. I mean, if you guys have any questions or suggestions while watching this, feel free to um, send them to me. Uh, and um, I will be happy to answer or apply those suggestions. <laughs> okay, what we have here. Uh, once again, once we do the production build, the NPM install actually will be much faster because there won't be any of those uh, dev dependencies that are there right now. You know, we have a bunch of them, uh, including the ESL and Babel and all that kind of stuff. So that's, uh, that's always an improvement. And I think we're going to tag them differently because right now, so we tag the test one as the latest uh, in the GitLab YAML. So this is basically going to be changed to, I um, guess we're going to add another one. So this is going to be release test and then we're going to have release production, right? It's probably the best way to do it. All right, there we go. NPM install finished. Uh, the digital ocean boxes are quite fast. So we're good here. Now it's copying the files and after that it should pull the image from, or it first should push it obviously to uh, Docker Hub and we should see it over here in uh, the versions, uh, which should be, I think, right here in, in tags maybe as well. We'll see in a second. All right. We have some actually warnings here from NPM, which I haven't, have they been here in my build as well? No, why? I wonder why they happen in there. Is this a life cycle stuff? That's curious actually, that shouldn't happen. Or did it just miss them? No, it didn't, right? So it's installed everything correctly. Okay, that's a bit weird. Theoretically it should, basically, I mean, the main point of Docker is that it behaves in exactly the same manner wherever you run the same command, right? 
and right now it does not do that so or maybe my wait let me do docker pull node maybe my node version is uh, or no docker image is outdated yep yeah, okay that's the point okay i guess i should run uh, docker build minus minus pull as well to make it more consistently uh, yeah, I mean, that's how the uh, last part of the development works, right? You code 20% and then you wait all the other time to make sure your continuous integration, continuous uh, delivery and continuous deployment pipelines work. <laughs> but the cool thing is that once you make sure they are working and uh, everything is uh, runs as expected, basically, uh, what you can do is uh, you can just build your things push them to the git repository and then you will in like in a matter of five ten minutes you will see them live in production and they will be purely tested and they will be uh working for 100 percent you know considering you have unit tests obviously in test coverage that is uh, adequate all right so we um actually if we go to pipelines we can see that uh come on show me so we can see the build passed uh we should now see the uh one of the images uh, yeah, last pushed a few seconds ago. There we go. Um, so we see the master image, which is from the master branch, which is exactly this uh, CI build ref name. Uh, so the test now should pull this image and uh, yeah, there we go. So it's pulling it right now. And after it executes our um, npm test command, I hope I didn't screw this one up, but we'll see in a moment. Uh, so basically, once it executes it, um, we should actually see that the old tests are passing or breaking. Then something went wrong, and you know I screwed up somewhere. So we're gonna figure out why. Uh, and uh, once that is done, it should tag it as the latest and push it to the uh, hub. And once it do this, we can very much add the second step where, or first, we will precompile everything. And then we will add the production build and uh, push both to the hub. And then I think that's basically going to be it for the stream. So it's not very exciting, you know, not much programming here and really like 80% of waiting. <laughs> All right, so it runs the NPM test right now. Let's see how that goes. Um, obviously, one of the downsides of having the mirrored repository in GitLab is that you cannot uh, have the auto execution of the CI pipelines on the pull request. So this is like one of the coolest things is that uh, when you have the pull requests incoming, uh, if we take, um, let me think, I don't know if you've ever, you've probably seen this on some of the repos. So if we take like, um, let me think. I mean, Babel probably has that, right? So if we take the Babel JS, and uh, if we take a look at their pull requests here, yeah, there you go. So they have the um, integration from uh, a bunch of services actually. So they use the Circle CI here, and you can see that the auto basically whenever the pull request comes in, you can integrate your continuous integration pipeline to automatically test it to make sure all the uh, tests are passing and the person who sends you pull request didn't break anything. They actually used two uh, CI systems, which is quite amusing. I wonder if there's a way to integrate GitLab CI into GitHub because <laughs> that would be very silly, but very cool. Um, so I'm gonna investigate that a bit later. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, no error, yeah, build succeeded, there we go. So test passes, congratulations to me, I guess. <laughs> version 010 is uh, working, uh, no fails, no errors, no anything. So of course we don't get a fancy output here uh, with colored uh, tests and everything that you normally get in your terminal, but who cares, you know it's uh, succeeded. So there we go, it's passed. We can go back to the pipelines and uh, if I refresh that right now, we should see a release uh, running and release uh, should actually pull the image again uh, and then tag it as latest and then push it back to the hub. I mean, this surely will pass because we don't really do anything here. So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna go ahead and uh, change a bit the uh, way it works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add pre-compilation. Um, so right now what we do is we say, okay, Here's our index.js and that's what we run. But we use this Babel uh, core register hook, 
which is, if you look at the Babel documentation, it's not recommended for use in production because it slows things down. I mean, okay, you know, it's kind of, it's only one time thing. So once all of this stuff that we are actually running is required, there won't be any problems with it, but it still is not recommended for production and there might be some quirks. So what we wanna do actually uh, before building is uh, we wanna add, uh, I guess that's gonna be, um, what was it, post install, I think. So basically after we're on npm install, we want to um, pre-compile uh, pre everything using the Babel, right? So there we go. So we're gonna have post install script over here. Um, let me quote that. And uh, do we, we have Babel core, but we don't have Babel CLI, right? So we need Babel CLI. Uh, npm install save dev babel uh, cli but that would mean yeah so that's going to be a development build as well so how do we do that properly i guess let me think what would be the best way so exporting now nah, that sounds quirky okay let's just uh pre-compile it for now and uh we I will think of the best way to do the production uh, Docker separately later on, because I, I still having a bit of a problem uh, wrapping my head around the way that like what would be the best way to do that, because we have a significantly different pipelines set up uh, at my work projects. Uh, but I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I will come up with something. Um, okay, and then what we want to do with Babel Cli is we want to say, yeah, there we go. So we are going to do Babel source out dear library. And um, if I run, okay, let's enter the server. And if I run npm install right now, we are going to see, um, wait, what? Uh, all right, package JSON modified, Babel source out dear lib. Okay, where the hell is my uh, lib output? Oh, post, ah, oh, God, okay. That's what I get for copying things. Uh, npm install, there we go. Now it should execute it and, uh, yep, cool. So now we have the lib folder, uh, which we actually should add to git ignore. It's gonna be server uh, lib. So it's gonna be ignore now. Um, am I right? Yes, I am. So we're now going to have this lib folder, which is compiled and basically um, this is, uh, we're going to change start to debug. So this is what you want to run once you are debugging. And then the real start, which will be like the live um, execution. So we here uh, require source index. And in this case, we're going to run lib index, right? Because this is where our uh, main code lives. So lib index.js. All right, so this will pre-compile it and then execute the compiled code, which will make it way faster. Um, right, so I think that should be it basically for it, right? So we're gonna, um, let's just make sure. So we added the new start, which will use the compile. We added the debug target, which will use the require hook. We added post install, which will actually compile it. And we ignore this folder, okay. Um, so git commit, um, use pre, um, yeah, let's, let's pre-compile uh, source after npm install, source says, I guess, and use um, compiled version for npm start. So that should do it. Let's push it um, to the GitHub. And uh, once again, I'm gonna go ahead and force, uh, so yeah, as we can see, it's passed. So now if I actually have a look here, we should see uh, two tags, exactly. So we have the master and latest, uh, which obviously is like for minutes difference. So basically whenever it pulled, tested and pushed them, not much of a difference here, but you know, still pretty cool, um, okay. We are going to go to the mirroring and uh, update it now. I hope they don't mind me updating so frequently. I mean, I, you got to love that they are giving away the enterprise version of uh, GitLab for free, essentially. I know they're kind of testing it. 
um, yeah, so basically they are testing their enterprise version and giving it away for free so you can use all the cool enterprise features on GitLab.com as long as you don't mind some downtime and a bit of uh, slowness that they are gradually fixing. Uh, okay, we don't need that. Um, we don't need this anymore. So what's left? Do I have anything left to do? Let me ponder. Um, so we pre-compile it now. We have the Docker file. We build the Docker image. We test it. We did release it. So basically the only thing that would be left is to figure out how to publish the npm install minus minus production. Um, and I think that's basically it. So let me see. So we got this stuff running. Uh, it should take some time. Oh, um, another thing we could do is we can uh, actually insert fancy badges into the uh, markdown, right? Um, I think they um, actually, wait, GitLab CI badges, they had them somewhere because all, all of the, um, all of the fancy CI systems have those badges. Okay, so they have this uh, other, Show build badges somewhere, blah, blah, blah. Come on, this works, this doesn't. Uh, come on, like, you, you've got to have some more docs somewhere, right? Get started. Um, badges, no icon. Ah, there you go. No, that's not the icon I want. Configuring runners. Yeah, the cool thing about GitLab is that actually, uh, if you are worried about you know sharing your private information, like company stuff, with uh, say using shared runners, uh, you can actually have your own runner, which is started with literally one Docker command. So if, if we go to the uh, install, um, wait, where's Docker, Docker SSH. Um, uh, no, that's the executor. Wait, where was the runners, GitLab runner, install GitLab runner, Docker service. So if you wanna have your own runner on your own servers, you know, like internally in the company, this is literally all you have to run. It is amazing. So you just run that and then you um, execute the register command where you say, okay, here's my GitLab instance, like for the gitlab.com, it's obviously gonna be like gitlab.com CI, but you know, you can have your own private GitLab instance, which is just as easy to run actually as the uh, runner. And then you have a complete CI pipeline that has been set up in like 10 minutes or something, which is I think amazing. Uh, and it's very easy to use in comparison to like Travis and everything was like a mess with docs and you have to dig through the issues to figure out how the hell does it work and what did you miss and what, what broken process. Okay, uh, where there should be, I've seen somewhere in the docs, um, uh, the fact that they had those bad st status badges that you could embed. Uh, this is the build past. Come on. GitLab does suffer from the same problem as uh, most of the large projects. They like Docker have the same issue that basically they don't really document everything super well. So sometimes you have to dig through um, docs to actually find out what the hell is going on. Okay, so let me fire up my sublime text here and uh, copy this URI and uh, so we need gitlab.com. I guess we want to use HTTPS here as well. So we're going to copy that part and then we need the master branch and then we need build SVG. Okay, that's not very hard and that's not working. Um, does it want HTTP for sure? No, that's not working as well. Okay, um, click to get batch URL for selected branch. Aha, uh -huh, okay, that's way easier. Um, dun, 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 running. So where is where is that? That is commits. Why is it in commits? Um, one complaint, like one major complaint I have about the uh, GitLab is the fact that they uh, don't really, um, don't really have this, you know, polish and consistency that GitHub does, not yet at least. They, they, their UI became way better in the past few builds, but still is a bit uh, all over the place. So it's way less concise than uh, GitLab's. Okay, revert, cherry pick, plain diff, patches, 
Come on. How hard can it be to find the bloody GitLab budge? Okay, get started with CI. How can I? There you go. Let's try walking through the issues. <laughs> Maybe I will find it somewhere here. Uh, correct. Is this? Aha. Uh -huh. CI projects one. Okay, what? That doesn't tell me anything. As any other badge of project requires constant authentication, cookie, new bug, no. Namespace project, yeah, that's the, so that's the Yamalite, right? Building pro products with, um, with JS master. Ah, there we go. So that's what we want. And um, we are gonna, actually, actually um, don't want to do that now. No, I don't want to do that now because in the next, the lesson after I basically talk about the Docker and CI and continuous delivery, I want to do a separate uh, part where I basically talk about what is generally needs to be in the repository when you release it to public uh, on GitHub. And that's when I want to say, you know, about the readme, about all these badges and test coverage reports and all that kind of stuff. So I think um, I found it. It's a good thing. So I'm gonna mm, let me think. But wait, wasn't it exactly the same? Or was it just no? Oh, I missed the com. How many? Okay, um, that's just me being extremely stupid as usual. All right. So uh, I guess I'm just gonna um, store it somewhere here for now and not commit it. Uh, and. Uh, Later on, basically, when I talk about all the things that you require uh, to share with people once you publish the project, I will actually uh, add it to the readme that we will create for the server um, subfolder. Okay, I think that's about it. So we're gonna wait a bit uh, for this thing to finish. So build is now done, test should be done. So it takes, what, six minutes to build? I guess it's going to take around the same time to, uh, to probably a bit faster, at least if the um, pulling is not as slow as it generally happens to be. But yeah, so uh, I think that's about it for today's live stream. Uh, if you have any questions, you have like five minutes time to ask them while we're waiting for this stuff to finish. And if you don't have any questions, cool. I mean, if you have them later on, if you're watching this as a VOD on YouTube, I will be happy to answer them in the uh, question sections to this video. Um, yeah, I think it's basically all I have to do today. So it um, looks like the next video will be pretty short as well because there's really not that much to show purely because GitLab CI is very straightforward and easy to use. Um, deployment is a bit trickier, but still, you know, no magic here. Come on. How long will it take? Ah, now it runs tests. Cool. Um, yeah, please auto scroll this for me. There we go. I mean, I get a low how fast the tests execute. So it's like four seconds for almost a hundred tests. That's pretty cool if you ask me. We had a test cases which was running like 300 tests in whatever, like 15 minutes or something for the front end. That was quite awful. Um, <laughs> don't even want to try to remember that. Okay, um, we got a release build running. And once that's done, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, once again, uh, I think basically, uh, yeah, I think for, I wonder what's a good, way to add this to the GitHub repo. Is there a way to add a link here somewhere to point to the GitLab uh, pages? No, collaborators, branches, deploy, no, that's basically not. Okay, I guess I'll just add this into the, yeah, I guess that would be a good point to add it to readme file. So, um, GitLab CI. So um, CI for all the sub projects is done using GitLab CI um, and uh, can be found using the following link. And the following link will be the link to um, preview 
No, not deprecation cop. Where's my markdown? There we go. Um, yeah, that that looks fine. So I'm gonna kill that. Uh, CI. Let's just call it CI CD. Yeah. Um, CD for all the sub projects done using GitLab CI. Uh, I think maybe this way it will make more sense. Right. Okay. Git status. Um, git commit. Uh, a link to Git lab repo from readme. That should do it. There we go. Cool. Okay. I think that's basically it. I closed. What did I close? Close something that I should not have closed, but <laughs> whatever, stream is still going. Okay, build succeeds. So for now, have a look at the pipelines. So all both should be green. Cool, this is the latest one. And if we go to the project, you can see here the status. So it passed 12 minutes ago, uh, the last comment. So obviously it's all working great. Um, basically, once we have that integrated in the readme, uh, there should be a nice, uh, I guess it's going to be a set of badges here for uh, server, front end, the mobile client, desktop client, whatever else we do during the uh, project uh, course. Um, yeah, last part is probably going to be using this. So basically, what we can do now is we can just say, uh, no, why do I write git docker pull? We can pull this image and um, the cool part is we don't actually have to install Node.js, we don't have to do npm install, we don't have to compile anything, we don't have to test anything. We know that once we pull this image, it's gonna be working, it is gonna be uh, ready for deployment. Uh, and now that I'm thinking it, it might not work. Yeah, because it's gonna try to connect to the uh, local host SDB. So it is, um, Another change that we need to do is we need to use the uh, process, the environmental variables to actually pass down the uh, experts DB URL, right? So we're going to use the experts DB URL environmental variable, um, which will allow us to override the um, default localhost. And we are going to do the same for port. It's another part of the deployment. Um, experts oath um, password pass salt. Let's call it this way. So basically the thing is that we, we need a way to configure the app inside of the Docker container without actually changing anything inside of it. And the best way to do that is actually to use the environmental variables. Um, session uh, secret, let's call it this way. And then we are gonna have our GVT secret. Uh, it's a bit out of bounds, so I'm gonna split the lines over here. Guess we're gonna I need to rebuild it. I guess I'm just gonna build it locally because I don't see any reason to. I mean, I know that you know it, it passes down, it works fine remotely. Um, da -da -dun. So I'm going to do docker build minus T. Uh, yeah, let's just call it this way. As you can see again, you know, ah, we, I changed the, yeah, because I have Babel clean now, of course, so it didn't hit cache, which is a bit sad. Uh, let's see how it goes. All right. So, and then basically what we can do is we can, uh, start our um, experts DB using npm DB start, right? And then we can provide the uh, environmental variable when we run the Docker container so they will actually connect to it and uh, use the database that we assigned to it. So not try to like find it in localhost, which will obviously fail. Come on, build. My computer is trying to fly away during those builds. Uh, NPM is a <laughs> decently heavy thing, especially when you try to stream at the same time. Not the uh, cheapest operation, let's put it this way. Okay, linking. 
There we go, come on, finish it up. Okay, now, now I have the same um, warnings, which is good. Which is a bit weird, um, they still haven't updated it to ESLint 3 point whatever it is. Okay, so um, what we can do? Okay, let me first remove my non-images that I have a bunch of in my Docker. Uh, there we go. So now we have our building products with JavaScript server latest, which was built 16 seconds ago. Okay, I am going to do npm run db. Um, wait, first, let me see if I have anything running. No, okay, cool. db start. That's what I want to do. Um, let's check. Okay, so it's running and it's called experts db. Uh, so what we are going to do now is we're going to say docker, um, first let's get that image name. We're going to say docker run. Uh, we're going to call it, we're going to do interactive run and we're going to remove it after we're done. We're going to link it with uh, experts, ex, 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 come on, no, experts db, I think that's the way it's called, right? Yep. Uh, and we're going to link it as uh, just db. I'm going to say um, that we have an environmental variable which is going to be called experts db url and in this case it's going to be db. We're going to forward port, uh, what did I bind to actually? Was it 8080? Uh, no, I don't want to watch it decompile source. Yes, uh, we're going to bind the port 8080 to port, um, I always mess up the docker bindings, I think it's this way. And we're going to run this uh, image here. So let's run it. Theoretically, uh, nope. What do we have here? Uh, export const unexpected token. All right, because we require... Um, wait, how the hell did the test pass it? Because the test don't require config JS. Uh, that might be a problem. Okay. So the config... Uh, is actually in ES6, but if required in from ES5, but that's a bit weird. How do you pass the tests then? Wait, where do we require config actually? Yeah, it should be required here as well. So why the hell? Huh, that is curious. I guess it's never got called. That's why it's... Okay, I mean, all right, let's rebuild it. Um... Rebuild this thing. Well, wow, we found the bug. That's a good thing. So rerun it again. There we go. So now it's connected to the database. And um, if we actually open our Docker host, should be 80. There we go. So we have our hello world. And as you can see, uh, requests are going to it. So it's connected to our... Wait, what? What? There we go. It's connected to our database that I provided to it and uh, it's working on the port binding that I assigned to it. So basically, once I push those changes, which allowed us to rebind the uh, config options and actually fix the config, <laughs> um, we actually it would be a good idea to add a unit test. Um, let me write that down really quickly as an issue. But I guess, I guess, yeah, so... Do we need a unit test? I mean, because this works. Config is just a bunch of values, right? Nah, I think we're, we're fine. Okay, uh, so our um, git, let's just verify it. Cool, so git commit uh, use uh, ES5 syntax for config, allow overriding config values uh, with environmental variables, right? Git push. So, and now, basically, let's go to the GitLab. Um, mm -hmm. Cool, uh, so if we force sync it, basically now once we actually do Docker pull and then we can do Docker run with the image that was pre-built, and now we can just, yeah, do use Docker run, give it environmental variables for whatever um, config options we want to override and it will work out of the box without installing nodes, compiling, running npm install, whatever. So it's way faster and way nicer uh, workflow for the end users, basically. Obviously, if you're a developer, you actually want the source code, right? Okay. Um, 
I think that's basically it. So we've done everything. Now it works. Now we can actually <clears throat> sorry, now we can actually pull it and run it. It connects to a database, it exposes the correct ports, it is pre-compiled. So we're basically only missing the production build, but I think this is something that I will need to think a bit about how to do it in the best way. Uh, and uh, we can also do it together with a continuous deployment once we set it up to auto deploy it to uh, one of my domains, I guess. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, we have a couple of minutes while the GitLab builds the whole thing. I'm not sure if I want to wait it there for it actually, because I think it, it should be fine. And uh, yeah, it's basically it works. So I guess I will uh, wrap it up here. Uh, if there are any uh, questions, feel free to ask them right now. If there are no questions or, you know, once again, if you're watching the YouTube uh, VOD thingy. Uh, option quality. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Uh, I know that I can stream on a YouTube as well. I was just, um, I think doesn't Twitch allow to select the quality um, wait, 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 there should be a source option, right? I think at least it should have been there. At least it was there last time I checked. Maybe they removed it or something, which is a bit of a pain in ass. If it's true, then maybe I will switch to the um, da -da -da, report video quality. Um, yeah, please play this. Let me just mute myself. That will be a bit strange. Come on. HTML5 player beta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, where's my streaming? No. Ah, there we go. No, it doesn't allow. Us. Okay, that's that's really annoying. Last time I, I wait, wait. Is it because maybe it's because the? Okay. Uh, let me let me see in Chrome. Uh, Twitch. So I'm gonna. I'm going to do an incognito window here uh, because otherwise it will throw me, I think, out to the wrong thing. Uh, pum, 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 yes, let me mute that thing. Yeah, there you go. It allows you to pick the source quality in the Flash Player at least. Right? Um, so that should theoretically I mean, that looks fine on, on my machine. And maybe that's the problem with um, HTML player they have. Are you using HTML or a Flash player? Nope, nope, that's not what I want. Okay, meanwhile, our build is uh, nearly finished here. Let's automatically scroll down. Yes, there we go. So, come on, npm install work faster. Right, so uh, basically I need to write down somewhere that I actually have to come up with a way for uh, production builds, right? That's what we wanted. Uh, come on, load faster. Uh, da -da -da -da. Guess that will be the best place. Uh, deploying Docker Compose um, production build with npm install minus minus production. Okay. Uh, Wrote that down, so that seems to be good. Yeah, I think basically we can wrap it up. I mean, I can try to maybe configure the OBS next time to stream both on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually possible to do, but I think my network should be able to handle that much output. Let me check. So you can, no, you can only specify one streaming service, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but uh, guys, if you were watching my Twitch stream and uh, you are now in the comments or you are going to be in the comments on YouTube, please let me know if, if you have the same problem that basically does not 
allow you to watch the HD quality of Twitch stream because this is actually annoying and if there are uh, several people who have this problem I will indeed switch to the YouTube streaming because you know quality is quite important especially when you have text on the screen so can't really read everything if the text looks like crap okay um, right so we have the build almost finished here uh, it should push it so basically we can pull the yeah so it will push the test build which will be the master one so we can pull actually that and test it um, so we can do pull master once it's done pushing we can test it and if that works we wrap it up here and then we do so basically i'm planning to do the video until end of the week uh, again it won't be a long one it, as you can see the stream took us um, not a too much time to set everything up i mean mostly waiting so the video is going to be a short one and then the next video is going to be on uh, important bits that you need to have in your uh, github repository once you share your project with the people like you know they're having a license file having a proper readme all the build badges uh, instructions on how to install it instructions how to use the docker instructions on how to contribute and all that kind of stuff Again, it's probably not going to be an ex extremely large uh, episodes, like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but I think it's important to talk about that because there's a lot of people who publish their projects on GitHub and you just open it. And it seems like it might be something interesting for you, but because there's no documentation how to do anything with it, you're just like, eh, so okay, what do I do with that? And uh, it's a bit unfortunate. So I always want to, you know, people share their work because... I prefer to reuse as much as possible. You know, if there's already, someone already did something and I can reuse his code and I know that it works, it's tested and it's easy to use. I prefer that over writing it from scratch, obviously. You know, I don't want to do additional work. Okay, so we should have a new push just now, right? Yep, a few seconds ago, cool. So we can pull that uh, new master image. Uh, should be a few new changes. There we go. So just uh, as you can see uh, 16 megabytes So there's not that much changes. I guess that's gonna be the node modules folder that actually was built Right, so we're gonna pull that and now we're gonna try to run it with uh, docker run and if that works uh, with linking our database again it uh, basically means we succeeded at setting up CI and uh, continuous delivery so uh, do not mess it up with uh, continuous deployment because those two things are different. Okay, so I'm going to run that. And uh, something broke. App leap in cannot find. Where? Wait, what? Okay. I guess it's a good idea to run tests. Wait, how did that end up in this? What? Wait a second. Okay, so we are, we have not succeeded. Um, why did npm install, did not generate the, uh, right, okay, I am an idiot. That's why, because we cache the, we cache the, so post install actually doesn't make any sense here. So because we cache the whole, um, we cache the package JSON, right? So we actually run npm install without any other files. And obviously Babel uh, post install won't really do anything. So, okay, what I am gonna do now is I'm gonna change this to uh, start back. So I'm gonna revert this change and I'm gonna tweak the uh, Docker file. So we're gonna pre-compile uh, JavaScript, uh, we're gonna run Babel source, yes. So we're gonna run this and uh, this is gonna pre-compile it. And then we, instead of npm start, we're gonna run node lib index.js, right? So that's what we wanna do. That should theoretically, now the question is why the, oh, it worked because uh, obviously, yeah. So I'm gonna ignore the lib folder here. That's why it worked for me when I did locally because it just copied my lib folder, uh, which is quite silly. Um, okay, let's try that again. Docker builds, uh, so we're gonna build it locally. Uh, obviously npm install changed again, even though dependencies didn't change, the npm install itself changed. So we are gonna have to wait through the installation again. Um, come on. But in theory, this time this thing should work. 
exactly as we want it, right? Unless I messed up somewhere again. I mean, as you can see, when it's 30 degrees outside, I'm not thinking very well. So I probably, will, if it was a bit cooler, I might have made less mistakes. But uh, since I'm a human, I'm an error prone as well. And that's why I need continuous integration to test things for me, because at least, you know, in the terms of source code, I want to be sure that all my functionality is working as expected. Okay, and uh, by the way, I think once we get to the continuous de deployment, I will talk about end-to-end -end testing and making sure that, you know, once you actually build all of your Docker images and once you deploy them in your uh, staging server, you actually run some kind of test to make sure that all of that stuff works together as expected. Uh, yeah, okay, true. Uh, Babel is node there, so what we want to do is we want to run node modules uh, bin Babel. That's what I want to do. Uh, now it should hit cache. Babel not found. Um, right, okay. Babe, it is there, right, okay. So why the hell is it not there? Um, <laughs> so we want it that way. No, okay. Now that's a bit weird. Um, okay, let's uh, let's do it this way, and then we just debug it a bit. Um, I'm gonna get a shell here, and uh, um, let's go to bash maybe, which is a bit more comfortable. Node modules. Bit. Um, I dot bin. There is no Babel here. Why is there no Babel here? That's a bit weird. Um, we don't have it in, in package JSON, right? Wait, where did Babel click? What? What? Did am I imagining things or did I not install Babel clear? Dev Babel, or did I accidentally wiped it from there? Now let's see. I am overheating here. I mean, you can see I already like, I, I thought I added the Babel key. Wait, okay, I have GitHub and I should be able to <laughs> have a look at my older comments and see if I did it or not. Okay, let's see. Uh, Precompile sources, yeah, that's the commit. Uh, all right, so I did I not do save dev last time? Okay, uh, now we do that, right? And now we rerun uh, build. So I will do npm install again. Now this time I got it, finally. <laughs> optimistic, very optimistic. All right, um, meanwhile our build is still running, which is a bit weird, it should be finished. Yeah, it's finished. Um, so test passes, everything is good here, but yeah, obviously it doesn't work because of the... I guess it's a good idea to also run tests on the compiled... Um, or maybe pre-compiled tests and run pre-compiled tests as well, because right now we use the uh, require hook 2, which is, you know, not the nicest thing ever. Uh, so we're gonna pre-compile test. Let me write that down as well. We need to pre-compile tests. Um, I guess I guess I can just create a GitHub issue here. So uh, pre-compile tests and run pre-compiled. Run uh, run them on pre-compiled sources, right? So. This is going to be enhancement and uh, I, I mean it's kind of a bug because we run one version of code and test a different one which theoretically shouldn't be different but practically mm, kind of can be so we're gonna we're gonna do that a bit later on all right uh, let's see there we go okay now uh, if we do docker run uh, no, no that's not what I want to ah, come on so I want to run, I want to run my, um, whatever was it called, BP, there we go. And now that works, so if we go to Docker Dev, we should see Hello World, perfect. Come up, 
No. Kill it. Kill it. Ah, Docker, why do you love to hang so much? Um, Docker kill, elegant care, there we go. Okay, um, let's check our diff now. So we now pre-compile it inside already using the Babel. We use node lib index, perfect. Um, we reverted the changes here, we added Babel Klee. So git commit uh, fix babel cli usage inside of docker file, right? That's what we want uh, and we'll push it. So this should be green right now because there were no new builds, right? Cool. Uh, and uh, we have to wait a yet again, um, such as the nature of configuring CI, I guess. Uh, God damn it. And such is the nature of me overheating. So when it's so hot, it's really hard to think straight. I might as well just call it a day and go play new Deus Ex. Uh, even though the optimization in this game is not very uh, great, I have been enjoying the storyline a lot. All right, uh, we are updating it. So it should basically start. Yep, there we go. So we just need to wait for the build and then we can pull the uh, master again. Yep, and then try running it. And if it works, once again, it's a victory. <laughs> and we call it a day because it's getting too hot. It's actually gonna be like 38 or something in two days. So I'm, I'm like, I'm preparing to die here. Like, I think my cats are already like all curling in the cold places around. <laughs> okay. There we go. Um, what else? Let me just quickly check. Do I have anything else that I have to do within this stream for the preparation to the next uh, video? But I don't think I actually have anything else. So we dockerized the thing. We added the CI tests, uh, the CI to run the tests. We added the continuous delivery to actually build and push Docker images to Docker Hub. Uh, hopefully I didn't uh, show my password for Docker Hub on a stream. I think it was on another monitor. I will recheck that. It will be very painful uh, if it's uh, known to people. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, basically we are done. So once we make sure that this compiles and works, um, I will close the stream once more. We'll try, let's let's. Let's not say that I'm doing definitely, but if nothing breaks, once again, um, I want to all just scroll to the bottom. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Come on. Package JSON. Why is my computer making those sounds? Okay, it's OBS encoding videos. All right. I mean. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm doing like one, one stream is goes to Twitch and the other stream goes to the hard drive because I'm publishing this later on on the YouTube and I want to have the highest quality because exporting from Twitch is uh, not exactly perfect. I mean, maybe streaming to YouTube would make it better, I guess. Um, not sure. I mean, how, how good is YouTube with exporting these streams later on? Well, well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So again, if you watch my Twitch and if you have issues with quality, do let me know because I want to make people suffer and watch it the blurry text once I stream this stuff. So I I have uh, configured the OBS to stream it at 3.5k, I think. Uh, no, three bitrate is at 3000, so uh, which is still you know quite high. So it should be. A proper 1080p without any major issues but yeah um, let's see how that goes all right there we go so linking life cycles should be finished within seconds so yes there we go yes lint to nine i mean wonder why does it complain about yes lint to nine it uses the yes lint three now right yeah, so that I guess they still haven't updated some of those plugins to ESLint 3, which is a bit weird, but all right, I can live with that. Warnings are not critical. Okay, there we go. Copying the app folder.
Come on. It's not that big when you're copying it so long. All right. Compile the stuff. Yeah, I guess that's just because shared runners are not the fastest runners in the world. Uh, obviously, you know, there's maybe, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's more than one job running on the one of those boxes at a time. So if I would want like super fast builds, I obviously would need to install my own runners, which uh, I don't really have resources to do so. I mean, I have my server, but I don't think it will handle running all my demos along with the runners that would do that. So I don't mind waiting a bit. Especially considering that, as I already mentioned it, once you've set this up, you don't really need to care about that too much. You just uh, basically wait for green build and that's it, right? Come on. So 10 minutes ago, yeah, that's exactly when it was. Come on, Babel, you cannot take so long to execute the thing. It's not like you're doing magic there, only maybe a bit. You want a raw logs? Uh, come on, Mabel. Right. Uh, do we have Do we have anything else? GitHub. Um, I don't want limes. I already worked on limes today. Um, where's my repo? So, oh yeah, uh, would be cool. Wait, let me let me search uh, integrate into uh, GitHub. So that, that that would be cool, you know, if we could actually use GitLab CI inside of GitHub for all those pull requests and stuff like this, that would be pretty cool. Um, collaborators, webhooks and services. Bro, so this is the Gitter stuff, yeah, at service. I mean, yeah, obviously, they, obviously GitHub won't really include GitLab in their services, which kind of makes sense, but yeah, it's a bit, it sucks a bit, you know? Uh, is there like a hook or something? Uh, okay, I mean, web hook. Okay, so GitLab CI, I wonder if GitLab CI has like web hooks so that we can basically just use a hook and tell, hey, pull this thing, refresh it and okay, build succeeded, we pushed it so we can now pull it. And just to make sure that it actually pushed. Yep, minute ago, cool. So we pulled a new version. Uh, this is a verification, web hooks, uh, da, 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 X, GitLab event push hook. So this is the hooks the other way around. And what we want is the incoming hooks. So commit events. Um, bum, bum, bum. Okay, I'll, I'm, I mean, I need to prob probably search for it a bit more. Okay, so now we can do docker run and uh, we can 8080 we can use this image so and no what's wait what what is going on again ah oh, come on wait it did compile it right i saw it building it with babel there you go. There it is. Or is it, did it just compile it to a wrong folder or something? Um, don't tell me it's in the root. No, it is not. I mean, it should have been executed in the work deer, right? So, um, which means we go to the app. Um, where is my lib folder? That is so weird. It did, wait, maybe it didn't pull the latest one? No, 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 no. No, okay, it is up to date. Um, I mean, we can, we can have a look at the hashes here. Should be hashes somewhere. What the hell is going on? 
master, yes. So we pulled master, right? And we're trying to... Oh, 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 okay. I... Um, of course, yes, yes, right, right. Um, why would I even add master tag here? There we go. There we go. Now, okay. <laughs> Thank God. Um, Docker kill. I uh, know, not elegant. What is it called now? Six. Okay, yeah, that's a great name for a container. Uh, okay, uh, so that works. Basically, if we go to the pipelines, is it have it published the release version already? Not yet. So it's now doing what? It's now releasing it. Um, come on. I mean, maybe we can actually optimize the GitLab CI a bit and just, but I mean, pushing and, and you know, pulling is better for a clean state because this is indeed rerun during the different phases. So it starts a clean from a clean state, which is better in terms of uh, consistency. So I guess that's, I guess we're good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's been uh, setting up the uh, continuous integration and continuous uh, delivery. So do not mess it up with deployment, which is basically publishing it to production. Uh, so this is just delivering the image, which you can now actually pull from uh, hub.com, Yamalite, BPGWS, uh, BPWJS server. You can just do Docker pull and then you can run it with uh, by providing the environmental variable and everything once again the uh, once i covered this in a proper video the next thing we're going to do is discuss what needs to be in the repo once you give it to people and that's where i'm gonna add all the readmes that will explain how to run it with a docker how to pull it you know how to test it how to run uh, it in development how to debug it and all that kind of stuff so Right now, obviously, there are no commands, so if you're not familiar with Docker, uh, I mean, go look at the docs, I guess, for now. So it's not extremely hard. All you have to do is actually link it to the database and then provide an environmental variable that points to this database host name, which in Docker is the same as the link name. Uh, and then you have to just expose the port, and that's about it. So after that, it will just work. Um, yeah. I guess that's it. Thank you for uh, staying with me during the stream. I hope you found something interesting during it and uh, see you in the video where I will talk about all those details in uh, about things that I did on a stream in a bit more detail and tell you why exactly I did them in the way I did. So see you next time. Bye.